Okay guys, welcome back to another collab from our collaboration group, We Collab. Last time we did a collaboration on the silver lining of COVID-19 virus and all the good things that have come out of it. This time we thought we'd do a collaboration for you on uh, Chinese habits that we've acquired while living here in China. So without further ado, let's get into this. One habit that I picked up living in China was never taking my wallet with me when I leave the apartment. When I used to live in the US, if I didn't bring my wallet with me, I would feel naked. I'd be like, how do I pay my bills? If I go to a restaurant, how do I pay without a debit card or cash? Well, in China, I'm actually so used to e-payments that I just need to bring my phone with me. I use my phone to make payments for food, whether it be at a restaurant or for takeout, to pay for my gas in my vehicle, to get a subway ticket at the subway to even shop online because it is that convenient. It's actually quite dangerous because it only takes three to five seconds to make a payment, which can result in you actually paying and spending more money. And trust me when I say this, but it is so easy to make a QR code to receive payments, whether you're a small shack in a market or you have a large store in the mall. Some places even accept just your face for payments if you register properly beforehand. Alex, what about you? What's a habit that you picked up living in China? Right, so a habit I picked up here in China is definitely something that I always intersplice Chinese and English together. Whether I'm um, talking like mess text messaging and I text message like half English, half pinging Chinese, or if I'm speaking to my friend, my other foreign friends, sometimes my Chinese wife, sometimes my other Chinese friends, I always kind of had this habit of um, like, you know, like intersplicing words. And actually this is quite common among a lot of foreigners. So it's not uncommon to be out at a bar, coffee shop, or just at work with your other foreign friends and be having this weird half English, half Chinese conversation, or just like intersprinkled words that you can't remember in English, because after a while it kind of gets like that. So are you coming to the party? Yeah, man. How many people are going to be there? Like 10 or 12 loud wine. Oh, cool. Can I bring my girlfriend? Make one some, bro. Hold up. Anyway, how about you, Snarky? With a telephone in your hand, you speak only in vowels. This isn't to say your mind isn't trying to communicate. True story, nobody multitask well. You identify someone talking in the background. Your brain, high on dopamine and eager to blast a few more bugs in Gallica, or perhaps make a not-so-safe work double in comparison to the political climate in your country to Anne Hathaway's panties on social media, and thus interpret these visceral attempts at verbal communication more or less like Charlie Brown's teacher. Oh, good grief. It's rude, discourteous, cheeky, disrespectful, and uncivil. After all, good manners dictate one should put their phone down and focusing when your coworker is mindlessly droning on about his fantasy football league or unconventional uses of hand sanitizer. Well, that's just wrong. But the question remains, is it rude to be using your phone when conversation is directed at you? or maybe in a business meeting, in a movie. I mean, in the West, the answer's clear, duh. But in China, we come full circle back to the 500 pound gorilla. Where does a 500 pound gorilla sleep? Anywhere he likes. So why do people in China focus on their phone instead of anyone else? Of course, we'd all rather be focusing on our phone rather than listen to someone else's drivel. And who wouldn't? Why not? Social etiquette says you can't. But in China, you can. Is it rude? Of course. It's a social equivalent to scratching your balls in public. But in China, it's more of a social faux pas that's become a social faux show since everyone here is doing it. Uh, the fact that you're focusing on your phone not scratching your balls. It's a very simplistic thought process. My phone is more interesting, therefore I'll just pay attention to my phone. As calling this out will cause both parties to lose face, nobody does it, and thus everybody pretends like they didn't notice that you did it in the first place. Problem solved! As a foreigner in China, it's easy to adapt to a new environment. Therefore, the local behavior becomes the new normal. This is, of course, not a problem so long as you're in a society that tolerates this. But once you're back in Western society, you may quickly find yourself a social pariah. Now, hang on. Um, yeah. Wait a minute. Hey, thanks, Nargi. 
It is part of the Chinese culture to be a good host and provide the best possible experience for their guests. They want to take care of the people around them. This is very clear when it comes to paying the bill for a meal. The finances of most Chinese families are handled by a single individual and paying the tab is usually the responsibility of this person. When taking out a large group of extended family members or friends, it gets a bit more interesting. In China, it is culturally acceptable for one person to pay the bill for the entire evening. They don't regularly split the price and everyone pays their share, as is normal in Western countries. At the end of the evening, and everyone is full and satisfied, this is when they start doing what I like to call the dance. Many or all individuals declare that they will be the one to pay for everything. This can turn out to be quite the comical scene as they beg, plead, debate with each other back and forth to who should honor whom to pay for their meal. This is all for show. The host wants to pay to show he or she is a gracious host. Guests want to pay to show their equal measure of gratitude. Neither wants to let the other pay and possibly shown to be less generous. In some cases even, if a person is financially at a disadvantage and can't afford it, they're still expected to take part in this dance, but then begrudgingly surrenders to let the other person pay instead. This all of course is sometimes avoided if someone goes and secretly pays the bill before the others realize it. This is certainly a habit that I have had to get used to being married into a Chinese family. What about you, Angelo? Oh, now eating with a fork and a spoon just doesn't feel the same. Living in China for a while has definitely changed my eating habits. I find myself constantly looking for the chopsticks instead of a fork and a spoon. I know it sounds weird, but... I just find eating things with chopsticks to be normal and incredibly convenient. I mean, all I need is two pieces of wood or plastic in some cases and I can just cram rice and food into my mouth. And not only that, even when I'm in restaurants now, instead of patiently waiting for the waiter to walk on over, I can just yell out in public for her to come over, him or her, like, hey, waiter. In the restaurant, I don't even say please and rarely say thank you. Is that Does that mean I'm impolite? No, it's just how it is over here. <laughs> What's happening? Am I becoming Chinese? And the restaurant is a public place in China. And, you know, eating is supposed to be a time of enjoyment and, and talking with your pals and your family. But in China, it's tuned up to the next level. I mean, you're talking very loud and, and it, 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 other people are too. And you know what? It's kind of exciting. It's blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I should probably clean up after myself, you know, put my tray away and throw my garbage away. No, I don't have to do that in China. Nice. Now, all of these new eating habits and everything have been ingrained in me so well. When I go back to America, sometimes I'll completely ignore the fact that I need to stow my tray away or I need to put my garbage in the garbage bin and, and I need to be quieter and I don't need to yell out for the waiter to come over to me and I need to be more polite and say thank you and please. Uh, oh, and I need to ask for a fork. <laughs> Whoa, look at the time. I need to tell Fernando to get up. Hey, Fernando, wake up. Good morning, Angelo. You're watching one of the Chinese habits that I have incorporated into my life, sleeping inside a mosquito net. I used to feel claustrophobic at first, but I have learned to appreciate it. The next habit I incorporated into my life, well, you can see it for yourself. And FYI, no, this is not tea. This is 100% Colombian coffee, yeah. And well, since you haven't guessed it yet, here it is. I walk outside in my pajama pants for a couple of reasons. Knowing that my dog has been holding it all night long reminds me to take her out as soon as possible. And well, having seen year after year Chinese people from all walks of life wandering the streets in their pajamas, I have come to appreciate how convenient and carefree it feels. And the quicker I get back inside, the sooner I can indulge in the next habit eating sesame seeds while binge watching TikTok videos. So what about you, Austin? What are you up to? As for me personally, living in China, the thing that has changed over the years dramatically is my perception and my use of public transportation and private transportation. So let's talk about that. While I was living in the USA, I had exactly one form of transportation, and that was my car. I used my car to go absolutely everywhere 
uh, no matter what the distance was, if it was a mile or a half mile, I, I would just always take my car because I thought, you know, walking, taking a bus, like, that's not cool. Like taking a bus isn't cool. But in China, the thing that you will notice is that public transportation is so well developed even in like smaller cities or even in towns. You can get buses for one to two yuan. You can get these shared bikes for like one or two yuan per hour. You can, you know, take Didi, which is sort of like Uber. You can walk. China is an immensely walkable country. And when I look at the pragmatics of living here and looking at costs, I just don't see the point of having a car here. And I think when I go back, to the states or to wherever I may go next, I don't think I'm gonna have a car. I'm gonna go somewhere with public transportation because it's just easier to deal with here. And that is something that has really, really changed. I would never have thought about having this sort of opinion back home, but now it's completely changed and opened up my world. Oh, sorry. Jay. Thanks for that, Austin. Now, for those of you that know me, I love my food. So I've grown up with kind of that Western concept of bigger is better, buy in bulk. Yes, I am going to consume four liters of cola somehow on my walk home. I always had that viewpoint of independent grocers and those little groceries being full of Oh, I've got to get my brand muffins and make some in strudel. Seriously though, I kind of didn't venture into them as much with kind of that viewpoint that they were going to be, often as they are in Western culture, more expensive and not have the range that I'd like to get. But I've been shopping in little grocers and my local, just like, you know, small outlets and I'm finding there are products that I can't usually buy in the big franchises. And amazingly enough too, the prices are highly competitive. There'll be days where I'll go stop by one, two, or even three small grocers on my way home just to get excited about seeing the range of products that they might have and the bargains that I could find. So call me an oldie if you will, but this is a habit that I've picked up while I was in China. Back to you, Alex. Right, so there you go guys. What did you think? Hit me up in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to all of us if you haven't already. And guys, we'll see you on the next collab. Bye bye.